This video was made possible thanks to the support of our amazing patrons. We couldn't do this without you. Don't forget that you can support the channel for free and receive 10% off orders over $10 of Flipside Gaming by using the promo code AFFINITY at the checkout. Or if TCG Player and Magic Madhouse are more your thing, then be sure to place your order through our affiliate links in the description. Once again, at no extra cost to yourselves. Hello everyone, and welcome to another EDH gameplay video brought to you by Affinity 4 Commander. My name is Martin. And my name is Alex. Today we have another game recorded in Geek Retreat Wirral back in early February, featuring two newcomers to the channel. We really miss playing Magic with the wonderful people across the game stores that we frequent, and can't wait for things to get back to normal so that we can hang out with them once again. But that's enough of that, we have a game to begin. So let's take a look at those opening hands. I'm playing my Sidisi Brew Tyrant Self Mill deck. I keep an opening hand of Grizzly Salvage, Path of Discovery, Three Swamps and Two Forests. I'm playing my Calicar Winds Fury Spell Slinger deck. My opening hand consists of Wayfarer's Bauble, Cyclonic Rift, Ristic Study, Teferi Hero of Dominaria, Temple of the False God, Hallowed Fountain and the Plains. Pete is playing his Micaeus the Unhallowed Reanimator deck. His opening hand contains Expedition Map, Grim Horror Specs, Sidisi Undead Vizier, Arcane Lighthouse and Three Swamps. And last but not least, Luke is playing his Fenax God of Deception Mill deck. His opening hand is made up of Ashiok Dream Render, Washout, Arcanus the Omnipotent, Dreadship Reef, An Island and Two Swamps. Pete wins the die roll and plays a Swamp. He then casts Expedition Map and passes to Alex. I play Command Tower and cast Wayfarer's Bauble before passing the turn. I play a Swamp and end my turn. Luke also plays a Swamp and passes to Pete. Pete plays a Swamp and passes the turn. I play a Plains and end my turn. I play a Forest and cast Grizzly Salvage. I reveal Acolyte of Affliction, Gnaw to the Bone, Altar of Dementia, Liliana Heretical Healer and Lanoir Wastes, putting Liliana into my hand and the rest into my graveyard. I then pass to Luke. Luke plays Dreadship Reef and casts Soul Ring, then passes the turn and Pete responds by sacrificing his map, searching his library for Cabal Coffers and putting it into his hand. I respond to Pete's response by sacrificing my bauble, searching my deck for a mountain and putting it into play tapped. Pete then proceeds to his turn. Pete plays Reliquary Tower and casts Grim Horsebacks. He then ends his turn. I play Hallowed Fountain, having it entered tapped and cast Ristic Study. I then pass to Martin. I play a Swamp and cast Liliana Heretical Healer. Alex draws a card from his Ristic Study and Luke puts a storage counter on Dreadship Reef. With nothing more to do, I pass the turn. Luke plays a Swamp and casts Demir's Signet. He pays the Wand of Ristic Study and ends his turn. Pete plays a Swamp and moves to combat. He attacks Luke with his Horror Specs, dealing him 3 damage and passes to Alex. I play Temple of the False God and cast my Commander, Kaikar Wind's Fury. Next I cast Soul Ring, creating a 1-1 Spirit with Flying thanks to Kaikar's ability. I then pass the turn. I play an island and cast my commander, Sidisi Brood Tyrant, allowing Alex to draw from his study. I mill three cards of her ETB, putting a creature into my graveyard and make a 2-2 zombie with her other ability. Moving to combat, I attack Luke with Liliana, dealing him 2 damage and gaining 2 life. I then end my turn and Luke responds by putting another storage counter on his land before proceeding to his turn. Luke plays an island and casts Arcanus the Omnipotent, paying the Rustic Study Tax. He then passes to Pete, who responds by cycling Baron Moor before moving to his turn. Pete plays a Swamp and casts Tatakite. He pays one for Ristic Study and passes the turn. I play Prairie Stream and cast Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. I make a Spirit and use his plus one ability, drawing a card. I then move to my end step, untapping two lands and end my turn. I play a forest and cast Path of Discovery, paying one extra to prevent Alex from drawing. Moving to combat, I attack Pete with my commander, milling three cards of her attack trigger. 
I mill a creature, making a zombie, and reveal Crypt of Agadim as being on top of my library with Path of Discovery. I put the land into my hand, and Pete declares no blocks, taking 3 damage. With nothing more to do, I pass to Luke. Luke begins his turn by tapping Arcanus to draw 3 cards, and then casts one Power Stone, paying the 1. Next he casts Wall of Frost, allowing me to draw this time, and plays Demir Aqueduct. Luke returns the Swamp to his hand, and passes the turn. Peach plays Cabal Coffers, and then casts his commander, Micaeus the Unhallowed. He pays one extra for Ristic Study, and ends his turn. I start my turn by activating Teferi's plus one ability, drawing a card, and then play Desolate Lighthouse. I activate the Lighthouse, drawing a card, discarding a card, and cast Thran Dynamo. I make a Spirit, and move to my end step where I untap two lands before passing to Martin. I play a Swamp and cast Reclamation Sage, paying one extra for Ristic Study. I then destroy the blasted study of my Sage's ETB, putting an end to Alex's card drawing shenanigans, and then move to combat. I attack Luke with Sidisi, triggering her ability, and mill three cards. I put three lands into my graveyard, and Luke blocks the Naga with his Frosty Wall. In my post-combat main phase, I cast Rosmeric Orb, and then pass the turn. Luke mills 8 cards in his untap step, plays a swamp, and casts his commander, Fenax, God of Deception. Next he casts Ashok, Dream Render, using their minus 1 ability to mill Pete for 4. Everyone other than Luke then exiles their graveyards, and Luke casts Silent Gravestone, before ending his turn. Pete mills 6 in his untap step, plays a swamp, and casts Mutilate. Luke responds by tapping Arcanus to draw 3 cards, and all creatures get minus 5, minus 5. Pete draws 2 cards with Grim Horror Specs ability, and Tatakite is returned to the battlefield with Micaeus' ability, but doesn't get a minus 1, minus 1 counter thanks to its own ability. Now that is some spicy tech. Not yet finished, Pete casts Bitter Ordeal, copying the spell 11 times of Gravestorm. He exiles a variety of powerful cards from each of our decks, including an Elish Norn, an Expropriate, a Deadeye Navigator, and a Cyclonic Rift, and then passes to Alex. I begin my turn by activating Teferi's plus one ability, drawing a card, and then playing Island. Next I recast my commander, and Martin reminds me that I should have milled four in my untap step. Oops. I mill the cards now, discard down to seven, and pass the turn. I mill six in my untap step, and play Temple of Malady. I keep the top card of my library where it is, and recast Sidisi, to which Luke responds by tapping his wall with Fenax's ability to mill me for 7. I mill the 7, then a further 3 when my commander enters the battlefield, putting a creature into my graveyard for the latter ability. I make a zombie, putting another creature into the graveyard of Path of Discovery, and putting a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Flesh Muncher. I then make another zombie thanks to Sidisi's ability, and this time mill a non-creature card with my Path's trigger. Sidisi's Path of Discovery trigger then resolves, and I put another non-creature card into my graveyard, ending my little interaction before it really got going. Sad times. With nothing more to do, I end my turn. Luke mills 8 cards in his untap step, plays an island, and activates Ashok's minus 1 ability. He once again targets Pete with a mill trigger, and everyone other than Luke exiles their graveyards. Happy with his turn, Luke passes to Pete. Pete mills 6, plays a Swamp, and casts Meteor Golem. He chooses to destroy Teferi with the Golem's ETB, and passes a turn, to which Alex responds by casting Sphinx's Revelation, where X is 4. He makes a Spirit, gains 4 life, and draws 4 cards before moving to his turn. I mill 8 cards, play Nimbus Maze, and move to combat. I attack Luke with both of my creatures, dealing him 4 damage, and move to my second main phase. Here I cast Tygam, Ojitai Master, discard down to 7, and end my turn. I mill 7 cards in my untap step, milling multiple creatures, which in turn trigger Sidisi multiple times. I mill plenty of creatures of Sidisi's ability, making multiple zombies, which trigger Path of Discovery each time a zombie enters. This mills me even more creatures, keeping the loop going for quite some time, allowing me to build up an army of zombie tokens before it naturally comes to an end by hitting non-creature cards. To cut a long story short, I end my upkeep with 12 zombies, 6 of which have plus 1 plus 1 counters, and a lot more cards in my graveyard. Not bad really. Next I cast Sir Conrad the Grim, play an island, and move to combat. 
I attack the Petra of Sidisi and a 3-3 zombie, triggering my commander's ability. I mill 3 cards, one of which is a creature, making a zombie and triggering Sir Conrad. Everyone other than me takes 1 damage, I reveal a land with Path of Discovery, and Pete blocks Sidisi with his golem. Both creatures die, and Sir Conrad deals 1 to my opponents when Meteor Golem is put into the graveyard. With nothing else to do, I discard down to 7 and pass to Luke, who responds by milling me for 7 with Wall of Frost. I mill 3 creatures, causing Sir Conrad to bolt everyone else for 3, and Luke proceeds to his turn. Luke mills a single card on his untapped step, which turns out to be a creature, causing Sir Conrad to shoot everyone other than Martin for 1. He then activates Ashiok's minus 1 ability, targeting Luke, who mills 4 non-creature cards. Everyone other than Luke exiles their graveyards, and Luke casts Washout, naming Black. Martin picks up all of his creatures, getting Major Deja Vu Vaj from a few episodes ago, and Luke returns Ashok and Fenax to his hand, before recasting both cards. Luke then activates Ashok's minus one ability, once again targeting Pete. Pete mills four, exiling the milled cards, and Luke passes the turn. Pete mills four cards in his untapped step, plays a swamp and moves to combat. He attacks Ashiok with his Scarecrow, dealing them 2 damage, and moves to his second main phase. He he casts Kakusho, the Evening Star, and then recasts his commander. Pete then ends his turn. I mill 5, and move straight to combat. I attack Ashiok with Kyakar, and Martin with my two remaining creatures, lowering the Planeswalker's loyalty to 0, and dealing Martin 4 damage. In my post-combat main phase, I play a cheeky Plateau, and pass to Martin. I mill 5, play an island, and recast Sir Conrad. Path of Discovery triggers, and I reveal a creature as being on top of my library. I choose not to put the card into my graveyard, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on my knight, and then cast Wonder. I reveal the same creature with Path of Discovery, leave it where it is, and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on my incarnation. Out of mana, I pass the turn, and Luke responds by milling Pete for 7 with his wall. Pete mails one creature, causing Sir Conrad to deal one damage to each of my opponents, and Luke proceeds to his turn. Luke mills ten cards, one of which is a creature, and Sir Conrad deals everyone other than Martin one damage. Luke then casts Duskmantle Guild Mage, plays an island, and ends his turn. Pete mills ten cards in his untapped step, only one of which turns out to be a creature. Sir Conrad deals everyone other than me 1 damage, Pete plays a swamp, and then casts a DC Undead Vizier. He sacrifices the Naga Zombie to her own exploit trigger, causing Sir Conrad to trigger once again, and bringing her back with a plus 1 plus 1 counter thanks to Micaeus' ability. This time, Pete sacrifices Kokusho to the exploit trigger, causing Sir Conrad to trigger for a third time. Kokusho then drains each of Pete's opponents for 5 life, gaining him 50 in life, and returns to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter. Pete then resolves both of the exploit triggers on the stack, surging his library for two cards and putting them into his hand. Still not finished, Pete casts Retribution of the Ancients, followed by Infernal Darkness. Not liking the sound of this, Alex casts Unwind, countering the enchantment and creating a spirit. Alex then untaps the three land that he used to cast the counter spell, milling three cards thanks to the Mesmeric Orb. None of these cards are revealed to be creatures, and Pete passes to Alex, who responds by casting Enlightened Tutor. He makes a spirit, searches his library for mythologic summonings, and puts the enchantment on top of his library. Alex then activates his Desolate Lighthouse's ability, and Luke responds by tapping his Wall of Frost to make Alex mill 7 cards. Alex puts the summonings and 6 other cards from his library into his graveyard, 0 of which turn out to be creatures, making Sir Conrad very sad. Alex then draws and discards, and moves to his turn. In my untapped step, Luke activates his Guild Mage's first ability, causing me to lose a life for each card that enters my graveyard this turn. I then mill 8 cards, losing 8 life, and Sir Conrad deals everybody other than Martin 1 damage thanks to the single creature that I milled. Moving to combat, I attack Luke with all my creatures, dealing him 9 damage. With nothing more to do, I pass the turn. I mill 9 cards in my untapped step, 6 of which are creatures. Each of my opponents takes 6 damage, and Luke uses Duskmantle Guildmage's second ability to make me mill 2 cards, depleting my library of cards. So Conrad deals my opponents 1 damage for the creature that was milled, which knocks Luke out of the game. If I'm going down, I'm going down swinging. 
Still at my own tap step, I activate Sir Conrad's ability, making everybody mill a card. One creature enters the graveyard this way, and Sir Conrad deals 1 damage to Pete and Alex. I repeat this 3 more times with 0 creatures being put into the graveyard, and then move to my draw step, where I lose the game. With me out of the way, Pete proceeds to his turn. Pete starts his turn by casting Hell's Caretaker, and then plays Arcane Lighthouse. Moving to combat, Pete attacks me with Micaeus, Kakusho, Sidisi, and Tatakite, and I respond by casting an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. I make a spirit, and Pete scoops up his entire board before moving to his second main phase. He recasts Micaeus the Unhallowed, followed by Kakusho, the Evening Star, and ends his turn. I respond by casting Swords to Plowshares, creating a spirit, exiling the dragon, and commandeering Pete with 5 life. I then move to my turn. Alex begins his turn by activating Desolate Lighthouse, drawing and discarding a card. He then moves to combat, attacking Pete with his commander and 5 spirits, dealing him 8 damage. Happy with his turn, Alex passes to Pete. Pete starts his turn by casting Sadisi Undead Vizier, sacrificing her to her own exploitability. Micaeus brings the Naga back with a plus one plus one counter, only to be sacrificed a second time to her own ability. Pete searches life for two cards before putting them into his hand, and then recasts Hell's Caretaker. Next he recasts Retribution of the Agents, followed by Tatakite, and then casts Carrion Feeder. Pete then passes the turn. Alex once again activates his lighthouse, drawing and discarding a card, and then moves to combat. He once again attacks Pete of all of his flying creatures, dealing him 8 damage, and then moves to his post-combat main phase. Here he casts Lightning Greaves, creating a spirit, and ends his turn. Pete responds to this by sacrificing his Tatakite to carry on feeder, putting a plus one plus one counter on the zombie. The Scarecrow then returns to the battlefield thanks to Micaeus, but enters without a plus one plus one counter due to its own ability. This allows Pete to repeat the process a million times, putting a million more plus one plus one counters on the feeder. Satisfied with the size of his flesh muncher, Pete proceeds to his turn. In his upkeep, Pete sacrifices Tatakai to Hell's Caretaker, bringing back the Grey Merchant of Asphodel in his graveyard. With Hell's Caretaker's ability on the stack, I cast a fair protection, giving myself protection from everything. I make a spirit, and Gary then enters the battlefield. His ETB fizzles due to there being no opponents to drain, and Pete passes to me. In Alex's upkeep, Pete sacrifices his merchant to carry on feeder, only for him to return to play thanks to Micaeus' ability. Gary drains Alex for 8 life, winning Pete the game. Well that's it for another video, we hope that you enjoyed it. Remember that you can help to support the channel in 4 quick, easy and cost free ways. Liking this video, subscribing, hitting the bell icon and leaving us a comment, I read every one. And if you really want to help the channel, then be sure to visit our Patreon page, there's a link in the description. That's all for now though, we'll see you next time. Stay safe out there.